Starship's next test flight is upon us, and some of you have requested an update. So here's a quick one just to catch everyone up on the latest, then I'm gonna end it with a quick channel update. Okay. So stick around. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. On February 26, SpaceX posted an article on their website concerning what exactly went wrong during Test Flight 2 and what's been built into the next Starship Super Heavy rocket because of that data. First writing that the most likely root cause for the booster's rapid unscheduled disassembly was determined to be a filter blockage where liquid oxygen is supplied to the engines, leading to a loss of inlet pressure in the engine oxidizer turbo pumps that eventually resulted in one engine failing in a way that resulted in loss of the vehicle. The company has since made hardware changes to the inside of the booster oxidizer tanks to improve prop filtration capabilities and refine operations to increase reliability. We heard what went wrong to cause the upper stage Starship to auto combust from Elon several weeks ago, but to restate, SpaceX added more propellant to Starship to simulate future payload deploy missions, but needed to vent it before re-entry. When they did that, seven minutes into flight, a leak in the aft section of the spacecraft developed and caught fire and led to loss of comms between the spacecraft's flight computers, resulting in a commanded shutdown of all six engines and the autonomous flight safety system clacking the vehicle due to the violation of a mission rule. SpaceX has also implemented changes and fixes to improve leak reduction, fire protection, and refined operations to increase reliability. Also a switch from hydraulic steering to an entirely electric system. Since our last episode, the next ship to launch completed its wet dress rehearsal at the pad, loading more than 10 million pounds of prop and taking the flight light count down to T minus 10 seconds. And SpaceX has added the flight profile for Test Flight 3 to their website at spacex.com launches. One thing to add is that the Starship will no longer splash down in the Pacific off of Hawaii, but in the Indian Ocean instead, probably because she may perform a second burn to simulate a re-entry burn. At this time, SpaceX is targeting March 14th for liftoff, pending regulatory approval from the FAA. So that's where we're currently at. Of course, I'll be here to stream it live for anyone who wishes to have a viewing buddy. Buddy! I'll also add that behind the scenes, SpaceX and NASA are continuing to push forward for the Artemis program. At the end of last month, they performed qualification testing for Artemis 3's docking system that will enable astronauts to move from the Orion spacecraft to Starship HLS in lunar orbit before touching down on the South Pole. <clears throat> well, that's all for today concerning SpaceX, but I want to take a moment to tell all of you what I told my members before the new year. As 2024 progresses, these episodes will become more scarce, if you haven't figured that out already. I'll certainly continue to live stream Starship launches because I enjoy hanging out with all of you guys. But when this current year comes to an end, so will SpaceX in the news. There is more than one reason, and we can talk about all that during Test Flight 3 if you want. But for now, I'll just say that I want to focus as much time as I can on my Bible studies and teachings. Yeah, I've been reading a lot over the last 15 months or so, and the more I come to understand and grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, the creator of the universe, the more I want to learn. All of this rocket stuff is interesting, but I've come to find that no matter what it is, the ephemeral just can't compete with the eternal. If you'll allow me just to read a small bit from Randy Alcorn's book here, then maybe you space nerds will see where I'm getting at. I actually thought about you guys when I read this a while back, concerning the eternal state that comes after the millennial reign of Christ. If Christ expands his rule by creating new worlds, whom will he send to govern them on his behalf? His redeemed people. Some may rule over towns, some cities, some planets, some solar systems, or galaxies. Sound far-fetched? Not if we understand both scripture and science. Consider how our current universe is constantly expanding. Each moment, the celestial geography dramatically increases. As old stars burn out, new stars are being born. Is God their creator? Yes. Suppose the new heavens also expand, creating new geography and space and ever increasing the size of God's kingdom. Will he fill that empty space with the new creation? Will he dispatch exploratory and governing expeditions to these worlds where his glory will be seen in new and magnificent creations? The proper question is not, why would God create new worlds? That's obvious. God is by nature a creator and ruler. He is glorified by what he creates and rules. He delights to delegate authority and dominion to his children to rule his creation on his behalf. Quote, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Isaiah 9-7. Godspeed.